discuss today about this uh, whole concept of, uh, of tshuva, of coming back to Hashem before the holy day of Yom Kippur. I think that uh, it's a very, very hard and painful thing in the world of tshuva, in the world of people that are trying to improve themselves and to become better people and we're receiving in too many uh, places in life, we're receiving um, mixed signals, messages that are contradicting each other and we're finding it very hard to understand what exactly we should do. A person wants to come closer to Hashem, he wants to serve, he wants to be modest, he wants to be honest, he wants to be good. And from every direction you hear different opinions about what you should do and how you should act and what you should uh, provide. And, and we're not finding ourselves accomplishing and achieving what that we hope for even after putting so much effort and then it becomes very painful and frustrating to think oh I sacrificed so many hours so many days I was working so hard and in the end like what happened a few weeks ago um, after a class of mine so a woman came and she asked me a question about her husband. She said, he's going all of the time after he's a rabbi, after his teacher, and to every place that he gives a class, so my husband is going after him, and always he needs to be part of the classes, if it's in, in, in that shul or in that shul. So he's an avrech, he learns Torah, and he's following his rabbi and trying to, to catch up and to be close to him. And the question is, when you look back after five years with your rabbi, after ten years with your rabbi, look at yourself. Did you achieve your goals? Did you became, become also that holy and pure? Did it affect you really that now you're also gentle and also nice and also good and super sensitive and caring and then you're much more generous than you were five years ago or not? So if the answer is not, so why are you running after him? He's not your answer. To eat from the leftovers of righteous people, so okay, I understand. It's written that there are many spiritual sparks in those, okay, so, but after you ate that kegel, kugel, after you ate all of those rogalas, where is the kdusha? Where is the holiness? Did you achieve it? There is an amazing story on a righteous man that he was always taking only one spoon from the soup. He wouldn't touch the rest of the soup. Only one spoon every time that he was eating soup. And one day he saw that one of his students is imitating him, is trying to do the same. And he took the spoon and take only one spoon from the bowl of soup and he's sipping it and that's it and he's finishing. So. The rabbi called his student and asked him, what are you doing? Why are you eating only one spoon of the soup? So he said, look, my teacher, my rabbi, I see that that's how you eat and I want to be like you. So I'm trying to do as you. I'm trying to do the same. <coughs> so he told him, I suggest for you to eat the whole bowl of soup. That it will be much better for you. So the student, of course, he was humbled, ashamed, he felt like he was not in the right level, so he asked his rabbi, what's the reason? Why it's better and good for you to eat only one spoon, and for me, I need to finish the whole plate. So he told him, listen, when I'm putting the spoon into the plate, into the soup, so all of the sparks of Kedusha, all of the holy sparks, the spiritual sparks of that food, are jumping into my spoon because everyone they want me to eat them but when you're putting the spoon so all of the sparks are running to the side so for you <laughs> to come to those sparks you have to clean the plate all the way 
When you finish, so then you'll have some arguments <laughs> capable. So, a person must be aware to himself. So, okay, you ate already 170 rogalaks from your rabbi plate. Great. Did you achieve the holiness and the purity by that? You must check yourself. You want to be religious. I found myself in the beginning of my tshuva, in the beginning of my tshuva at least I can say I was honest. At least in the beginning, my beginning was on the right way. I really wanted to be good, I really wanted to be honest, I, want, I was desiring the truth with all of my, my power, my will. I was dedicated for the truth, very strong. After a while, the Yetzirah came to me and he offered to me to become religious. And he told me, come, you'll be Haredi, you will be religious, you will keep Shabbat, you will eat kosher. And all of those offerings sound so good because it exempts you from tshuva. You don't need to seek for the truth anymore. And you can just fulfill your obligation by being religious. You go to shul every day, you hang out with a bunch of Haredim. And everything is good. A lot of kugel, a lot of, of rogalach. And uh, you know, it, it sounds, sounds good. But it's not true. It's a, it's a, it's an illusion. And after a while that you are very observant and you're keeping Shabbat and you're eating kosher and you realize that you stop searching for the truth. <coughs> and then you need to do tshuva on the fact that you were religious. You need to do tshuva on how that you were keeping Shabbat. You need to do tshuva on how that you were eating in kashrut. You need to do tshuva on how that you were praying to Hashem. Because you can, now you're praying, let's say, you're religious, you go to shul, you go to a synagogue and you pray. But you're not really in touch with the Creator. You don't really have no connection. You don't have no heart over there in that prayer. You're just reading. Okay, so you will be rewarded. You you have A plus on reading. Great, so great. You can you you can come again to shul tomorrow. But really to pray, really to connect yourself to Hashem, it's something else. It's not to be religious. It's to ask for the truth. It's to ask for the Creator. To reveal himself to us. So, when we're trying to come back to Hashem and to, to erase our mistakes and to clean ourselves and, 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 and to ask for forgiveness from, from Hashem in Barach, we need to understand that just to follow advice of other people, it won't connect us to our inner point. If you will imitate someone else, if you will try to walk in his footsteps, it doesn't guarantee it's necessarily going to bring you to the same place that that person came to. You won't achieve the same level by doing things that will look to you that are the same like that he was doing. Why? Because he might have higher intentions, kavanot, his heart was much purer, or he was really realizing what he was doing while doing those <coughs> things. And when he did them, he achieved such amazing things because of his intention, and not because of his action. So you can now go to shul, and if your intention is to do something wrong, and you're not aiming right, so you won't achieve what that another person with a holy heart, and a wishing and desiring soul, is coming to the shul, and he will achieve because Rahmana Ali Babai, the Creator, He wants your heart. He really wants you to open your heart and to connect yourself to Him from inside. From inside. And what is that inside? That inside is who that you really are. So you must bring your true self into Avodat Hashem. You must serve Hashem. You don't need to supply Avodat Hashem. You don't need to be religious. You don't need to come at 8 or at 7 or at 6 to the shul. That's not it. You need to bring yourself to the synagogue. You need to bring yourself to the prayer. Means that even when you're praying, it's not only to read what it is printed and written in the books. It's to call Hashem with your own voice. Like that the verse is saying, that Hashem is saying, telling Abraham, everything that your wife Sarah will tell you, you should listen to her voice. Shema Bekola. And it's written also on Hashem that Hashem Shomer called Tfilah. He listens to the voice 
of prayer. Not only to the prayer, also to the voice. And I explained it once. What's the difference? Why we need to mention to Abraham, listen to the voice of your wife. Why we're mentioning that Hashem listens to the voice of our prayer. Why, what seems so important in the voice? And I explained it once or twice that if a child, let's say he's in the Far East, and now he's calling his mother. After two years they were not in touch. And now he's calling. Hi, Ima, mother, how are you doing? What's going on? She said, oh my son, I'm so happy to hear you. What's going on? And he will tell her, oh, don't worry, everything is fine, everything is great. And she will tell him, okay, what happened? And she knows. Why she knows? Because she can listen to his voice. The words were perfect. Mommy, everything is great. Me and Susie, we're happy. We have kids. I'm working. She's great. Everything is perfect. But she can hear that the voice is not happy. Why? Because she loves him. So when you love, when you care, you can hear things that will be very thin, very gentle, and you will feel them. You will hear them. What that someone else won't feel. And Hashem Barach, He listens to the voice of your prayer and not only to the words of prayer. So if you go now to the synagogue and you open the Siddur and you start reading Hashem, what are you doing? You are not listening to the voice of the prayer. Why to pretend to be something that you're not? Why to pretend? Why to be... Let's say that you are afraid. What are you doing? Are you, are you serving out of fear? You're afraid not to go to the synagogue, so that's where you're going? So that's the level, that's your intention, that's what you're doing, that is how that you're aiming your prayer, the highest thing that you can achieve in Abu Dhat Hashem, to pray to the Creator, to talk to Him. It's the highest level of them all. And that's how you do it? Because you're afraid not to do it? Join me, are you crazy? I'm not doing anything out of fear. I'm not afraid. I'm just doing things because I want to. Because I love Hashem. And I do. I found those points, that in those points I feel connected to Hashem. And based on that love that I found that I have inside of me, I build a relationship. And I'm being honest about my connection with Him. I'm telling you, listen, I want to succeed. I want to do big things for you. I want to accomplish. I want to, I want to fix myself. A few days ago, I spoke with a friend of mine, with a student of mine, and he was talking to me about Shalom Bayit. And he's asking questions, how to... His wife, she was not so happy, and he needed advice, and he asked for some guidance. And I told him, the main thing that you should work on is your will. You need to want... To help her. You need to want to be by her side. So he said, okay, but I'm trying. If I'll come earlier, I, I, it's not always helping. And if I will try to help with the child or whatever, I, it, it doesn't help all of the time. I told him, no, no. I didn't say help more. I said you need to work on your will. Sometimes you can help another extra hour, and in that extra hour you will fight with your wife and you're going to lose your shalom bite, you're going to lose the connection. Because of that hour that you came, why? Because the truth is that you came because you don't want to fight, or because you don't want her to be able to tell you anything bad, or because that you're afraid, or I don't know why, but your heart is not aimed to the purpose of really to want to help her. She doesn't need you for another hour in the house. She needs you to want to be with her. Even one hour less, but at least with the heart when you're coming. Like the Torah is telling us that it's better to do smaller amounts with the right intention than to do a bunch with no intention, with a lower intention. So if Hashem in Barach himself is hinting us on that, and he's telling us, hey, I want you to have the right intention. So you must develop awareness to yourself and to see when you're doing things out of fear and out of habit, and when you're doing things out of your love to Hashem, out of your understanding on the importance of Hashem and serving Him and connecting yourself to Him. And when you'll have that pure intention, 
of a good, honest will, then you'll succeed. So when we're trying to do tshuva, and we want to fix ourselves before of Yom Kippur, and we want to complete our tshuva, and we want to be holy, and it's okay, great. Do everything you want, but do it from the heart. If you're not doing it from the heart, I'm just telling you my opinion. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You don't need to. Because Hashem, the Creator, He is he is an, 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 he is he is important. He is great. You cannot fake with Hashem. You cannot act in front of Hashem. You cannot play games in front of Hashem. And to think that Hashem will buy your nonsense, what that other people cannot recognize, what the other people won't notice. When you are coming, you need to understand that you are open, like an open book in front of Hashem. That the eyes of Hashem can see you, can feel you, can hear your voice. I have a friend, once he took his son to, to, to the hospital, he was in a very hard condition, and when he was out there, his kid was in surgery or something, and he was outside in the, in the backyard of the hospital walking, and he wanted to pray, he wanted to, to ask for salvation from Hashem, but he couldn't say one word. The sorrow was so hard, so deep, so heavy, he couldn't speak. So he said one sentence. He said to Hashem, Baruch Shomei Ashtika. You are the one, I, you are the, the blessed one that can hear my silence. Even only my thoughts. Even when I cannot express myself at all. And you hear that. You hear my thoughts. You're inside my heart. With that approach, with that understanding, how great Hashem is, now we can start serving Hashem. Hashem doesn't need many pages. Hashem doesn't need one book from this cover to the other. Hashem doesn't need us to finish bookcases after book. No. Hashem wants the truth. Hashem wants honesty. Hashem wants purity. Hashem wants you to be answered, that your prayers will be answered. If now, let's say that I'm an angel, okay, I'm a divine angel that came down from heaven, great. Now, I'm praying on certain things. Let's say, because that I'm an angel, Hashem will answer all of my prayers. Will it satisfy you? Okay, so you'll be happy that all found what he needed. Great, so you're happy. But will it answer all of your needs, all of your questions, all of your doubts, all of your difficulties? No, it won't. You have an issue with your neighbor, you have an issue with your car, you have an issue with your boss, you have an issue with your family. You, you have other things in life, right? And you need salvation to come to your place, to your area, to your issues. You need the light to heal you and your beloved ones and your family and your, your circles. That's what you need. So for that, you need to open your mouth and to express your sorrow and to share and to ask from Hashem for salvation to your place. So for that you need to understand that you are standing in an important place, a place that needs to express itself. That you from your spot must at least feel that you are important enough to pray, to ask for salvation, to call Hashem and to tell Him Hashem every second day my car stuck, every single day I need to go and pay the tolls and the, the, my income is so low and my budget is so tight and I, I can't finish the month Hashem. You need to pray on those things. And if you want to pray like me, like we said before, let's say that I'm an angel and you will stand and you're going to pray my prayers, Hashem, make this and do that. It won't answer your needs. You really need the salvation about your financials. You really need the salvation in your house, with your family, with your plumbing, with your stuck in car. That's what you need. So if you will pray my prayers, they won't save you. Because you were praying on very high things. But not on the things that require it for you. Because you need your car to drive. And you need to have money to pay your bills. And you need the right advice how to have peace with your family in your house. So you need your own salvation. So for that you need to understand that you are important enough to pray for you. That you will start praying for yourself. 
that you will express your feelings, your sorrow, your pain, the feeling of loss, all your needs, that you're going to tell Hashem, Midbarach Hashem, I need you. Hashem, I need you to come and visit in my house. Hashem, please come. What does it mean that the couple, they have Shalom Bayit, that the Shekhinah is between them, that Hashem is walking with them in the house, that you can feel the presence of Hashem inside your own house. That is something that you can achieve by being holy, by being honest, by being pure. Those are important and amazing things that a person can achieve only by walking one step after the other, trying to do the best that he can. And the beginning must be an honest and truthful beginning. That you will be powerful enough to express yourself in front of Hashem. And not to be embarrassed in your condition. And to feel like, oh no, I cannot pray on that. No, it's so humiliating that I have that problem. I cannot discuss it with Hashem. Hashem sees it all. And Hashem wants to help you. And that's why Hashem got you to that place that you will be stuck right now, in that exact situation that you're stuck at right now, that from that humbling situation you will wake up to do what? Only one thing. Call Him. Talk to Him about it. In your own language. Counting on your own emotions and feelings. And ask for salvation that will heal you. That will build you. That will give you what that you need. And I'm telling you, and again, I'm telling you from my life experience. You can think to yourself, and I must wake you up from that dream. You can think to yourself that in front of you standing someone that is special in a way. I must wake you up. I started my tshuva something like 20 years ago from zero. From zero, so now. In those 20 years, it's true. I prayed thousands of hours in it, but we ought. And when I was in Uman, so I could stand four hours, Shmonaitra in Rosh Hashanah. And even in this Rosh Hashanah, here in Shul, I was praying for one hour and a half, Shmonaitra, and I was pray- Yes, I achieved amazing things in my life. No doubt about it. But I started lower than, than zero. I started empty-handed. I didn't have anything in my hands when I started. I didn't know how to keep Shabbat. I was watering the garden in Shabbat. A neighbor asked me, are you reformed? I told him no. I asked him why. He said, you're not allowed to to water your plants in Shabbat. I said, okay, thank you for telling me. And I went and closed the fasting. I didn't know. I was not eating kosher. I was doing everything wrong. And that's my starting point. And from that place, now today, I'm very dedicated. I'm super dedicated. I'm very into Abodat Hashem. I learned thousands of hours of Torah. I years in Yeshivot. Great, yes. For 16 years, I didn't miss Mikveh even once. Blin Every day, even in the end of Yom Kippur, I would go and if I wouldn't find a spring or an open mikveh in the area of Jerusalem, I would drive to Tel Aviv to the sea and I would dip in the sea. Yes, my family will testify, will tell you how crazy I am. Yes, so what? So for one year and a half almost, I didn't sleep in a bed. I was sitting close to our dining table in a, in a chair and I was learning all that. Yes, I had that crazy time in my life. Yes. But still remember, I started all of those things from zero. So even if you feel that you are the lowest, worst zero in the world, so let's say that you're right, okay? I'm with you. Let's say that you are the worst. You're so horrible, you're the worst. Great. Now what? What do you do with that? Now there's a person that sits in prison after killing his best friend. Okay, now, what do you want for him to do? What do you want for him to do? To kill himself now in prison? That's his mission? No. He needs to do Shiva. He needs to go out now, after he finished spending his time in prison, after working on himself in prison, and now to go back to the same neighborhoods, to the same streets, and to sit with the young guys, with all of those criminals, and to explain to them the importance of life. 
And how horrible it is to lose 20 years of your life in prison. That's what he needs to do. That's the only way to fix. If you're going to go back in that path that you messed up big time in that way and start fixing. And how you're going to fix, you don't know how to fix, just be honest. Just be loyal. Just be nice. Just be who that you really feel that you are inside and count on yourself. Count on your inner voice that is telling you that you must be honest, that you must be generous, that you must be nice, that you must be polite, that you're not allowed to scream, that you're not allowed to be angry, that you're never allowed to hit no one, not to curse no one. Count on that voice and follow it. And then you will achieve huge things, huge things. Only by connecting yourself to the roots of your own soul. Who that you really are. And Rabbi Nachman of Weslev is saying, if you believe that you can ruin, you should believe that you can fix. Why Rabbi is saying like that? First of all, it's great. If you believe that you ruined something, so now, don't give up because you ruined something, even if it's horrible, even if it's so big, and you destroyed it completely, don't worry. If you believe that you ruined it, you should believe that you can fix. Great, so Rabbeinu is planting hope in our hearts that we can fix. Great. But why Rabbeinu is saying, if you think that you can ruin? What do you mean if I think that I can ruin? If I ruin. If I ruin something, so I should believe that I can fix. So Rabbeinu doesn't say that. Rabbeinu doesn't say if you ruin. Rabbeinu is saying, if you think that you ruined, means that you cannot really ruin anything in this world. That it's all planned by Hashem. That Hashem is Barak, He decided exactly in which house you're going to born, with which family, in which neighborhood, with which friends, exactly who going to be the guys that will spend time with you in school, who would be the first ones to show you a smartphone when you were 12 years old, the ones that offered you your first cigarette. He knew exactly who to bring and to plant into your life to make you now today, in this day, in that position, that you're humble from life. That now you can come back to Him. Hashem Barach took every one of us in a unique path that is written precisely to the roots of our soul. You met exactly the ones that you were supposed to meet. You had conversations that were discussing the exact topics that were important for your soul. You were hosted and visited in houses and places and communities that were fit for you. Exactly what you need to go through, you went through. And who did it all to you? Hashem. How can it be? Hashem, He decided that I'm going to go in secular to this world. Hashem wanted me to break Shabbat. Hashem wanted me to eat shrimps and lobsters. That's the will of Hashem. How can it be? First of all, we know that if Hashem would want me to be born in a holy community, we know Hashem can do that. But He didn't do that. Why? Because He wanted me to go through a different path. And now that I have faith, I can look with those eyes that realize, my eyes can realize, can see that that path has been created for me by Hashem. That Hashem painted my world just for me. And built me to be who that I am today. And now after that I went through that process and that kind of journey, I have certain tools and weapons that I can use. And another person that didn't go through my journey, he doesn't have those tools. He doesn't know how to deal with situations that I need to deal with. And Hashem built me exactly like that I was supposed to be built that I will have the power to deal with my life and to accomplish what that I need to accomplish and to succeed in my mission and to do what that I am supposed to do and that I can do and that I will do. But only when I will wake up to understand that I'm also important, exactly like that I am, exactly like that Hashem made me to be, because He made me. 
He is the tailor, he is the carpenter, he is the illustrator, he is the builder, he is the author, he is everything. He is the king, he is the boss. He is in charge, he is the supervisor. He is on top of every mosquito, every fly that flies 2,000 miles from my house. And I cannot see the connection, but Hashem he does. And Hashem Ibarach is organizing everything in a personal, individual supervision that will be so precise for your tikkun that you will fix yourself completely that it's scared. So that's why we need to open our eyes and to understand that no matter what we go through in our life, it's from Hashem. And now, try to understand what is the intention of Hashem. What Hashem wants from you in that situation. Now in that hour that you cannot learn, what Hashem wants you to learn from the fact that you cannot learn. Now in that time that you cannot pray with the right intention, what is the intention of Hashem? What is the hint of Hashem? What is the will of Hashem that He's trying to wake you up to see, to realize, to find, by not being able to pray? And if you will try to learn that lesson from every situation to take the right conclusion, to work on yourself, to be positive with yourself, to give yourself strength, to cheer yourself up, always to build yourself and never to ruin, always to try to make one more step toward Hashem, to be more honest, to be nicer, to be a little bit better today. If you're just going to do that, you're going to achieve huge things that no one can describe for you. That no one can promise you. Except of what that you will see and experience in your own life. Your eyes will see things that no one else except of you will have a merit to see. I'll tell you something about Hashem and it's something that I'm going with for a few months, thank God. Think about your ability to open your eyes and to see, to smell with your nose and to hear with your ears. It's an amazing machine that works, that can catch many, many details, but still, look how narrow and small and tiny you are compared to the world. Now you can see this living room. Great! When you're going to go, you can see 200 feet, one mile in front of your eyes if the view is open. Great! You can see one mile, two miles if it's a clear day. Wonderful! 20 miles if you're in the mountain in the summer, day, great, but you're very limited. You cannot hear the voices, you cannot smell the smells, you're limited in your tiny ability inside of the body. But your friend that stands one feet to your right, or one kilometer from you, in that place, he can experience something else, right? So, let's call what that you can sense, 100 square feet, okay? And he can experience another 100 square feet. And now another person can feel the same. Great. Now, what about Hashem? Hashem can feel all of your 100 square feet. And Hashem is Barach can sense even more. Because Hashem can go even deeper into the details. Hashem can walk with the animals inside their caves and their tunnels and under the grass and into the woods and into the, the, the trees and above the trees and Hashem can fly with all the birds and Hashem is, is, Hashem is everywhere. And the eyes of Hashem and the nose of Hashem and the ears of Hashem are open and receiving the information from the wide world. Even in the secret of a stone that is calling from the wall, a brick that calls from the wall, Hashem can listen and hear her scream. So Hashem, the Creator Himself, He experienced in the world in a very, very high and great level. He feels everything and also He feels everything in an eternal way. For you, if you heard that voice, so in the moment that that voice passed, that's it, you don't hear it anymore. But for Hashem in Barach, the world is not temporary. Hashem can hear that voice forever. So not only that He experienced everything, He also experienced everything forever. Okay? So that's something about Hashem. Now, 
Think about the pleasure that you have from hearing a song that you like. From hearing a good news about something that you were hoping for a long time. In the moment that that song finished, or that you finished eating and tasting that food, or whatever you experience, the joy, the satisfaction, the, the pleasure that it finished, it goes, it disappears, right? But when a person is connected to eternity, to Hashem, to the Creator, to the world to come, so he can start enjoying from every satisfaction like that Hashem can, means forever. So that's what Hashem is willing to give, to inherit to every one of us. To have life with Him in the world to come that will be an eternal life of pleasure, of joy, of satisfaction. That you will enjoy from certain things for good, forever. But think about it. When you see the view, when you see an amazing piece of land, you see mountains, you see the weather, sunset, sunrise, mountains, springs, lakes, you receive something from it, right? But you saw only one spring. You know how many springs there are in the world? You know, you saw an amazing tree, an amazing sunset, but you can see the sunset from billion locations in the world. You know how many locations you can see the sunset every day? So the world is huge, right? And it's written that Hashem is ready to provide, to give, to inherit to every righteous one, every righteous man, 310 worlds to inherit. That that will be His reward to the world to come. That you, as a person that fixed Himself, you will be in charge like the Creator, that now the Creator is in charge of this world to supply and to give and to support and, to, and, to, and to, to take care of us. And He's also enjoying from our happiness and from our salvation and from our joy. You will have the ability to enjoy like that from the joy and satisfaction of the creation in an eternal way from 310 worlds. That's how great is the reward that Hashem Barach is planning to give you. Something that you cannot estimate, something that you cannot measure, something that you cannot understand with your mind. But that is the real will of Hashem. That is the real plan of Hashem, to give you a reward in the world to come that is like Nachalat Belim Sarim. It's a, a, a land with no borders, with no walls, with no limitations. You will inherit infinity, endless, eternity. That's what Hashem wants to give you. So for that we need to have faith. We need to understand the potential of our life. How great it can be. When we're talking about the salvation, the redemption, the, 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 the amazing days of Mashiach, do you know what will happen in those days? It will be so simple. Just all the bad will go down the drain, go, will fall, will disappear, and you won't even notice that it went. Just if you were part of the good, you will be happy and healthy and wealthy and strong and stable and positive and everything will go smooth. That's the redemption. You won't see a, 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 a burning house. You won't see a, 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 a stuck car in the, in the side of the road. You won't see... You, everything will be perfect. Everything will become beautiful. The flowers will grow. The squirrels will play. The birds will sing. And you will be able to go with them. And they won't be scared of you. And they won't be scared from each other, from the predators. There will be no more anger. No more hatred, no more cruelty, no more death in the world. People won't die anymore. Everyone will be healthy. Everyone will get healthier and healthier and stronger and stronger. And that's the redemption that we're talking about. The cemeteries will disappear. All of the, 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 the tombstones will fall and disappear into the grass. And the dead will rise. And they will be judged by Hashem. And then the ones that will have the merit to join to the holy and, 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 and healthy in their minds public that are serving the Creator on earth will join them. And the ones that were evil and horrible and cruel people 
that were refusing to listen to the voice of, of good, they will disappear from the world. There will be clouds that will come, and thunders, and lightnings, and, and horses that made of fog and clouds, with, with steam in their noses, and flames of fire, but you won't see them. They will come and you will be asleep, and they will take, take the cruel people down to hell, and you won't notice that. You won't feel that. It won't be a crazy war with bloodshed and wounded people in the streets. No, it won't be like that. The third salvation, the third temple, will be a temple that's made out of fire that is coming down from heaven. And it will catch its place in the mountain of, 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 of the Holy Land in Mount Sion. In the holy place of the Mons. And peace will come to the world. And friendship, and unity, and love, and honesty, and dignity, and support. And no more lies, and no more scams, and no more fears, and anxieties, and sadness, and, and frustration. No more depression, only happiness, and positive thoughts of hopes, and dreams come true. And that is the process of salvation, of redemption. And we can live like that already right now. And you're going to ask how? But we don't have that power yet from heaven. We still don't have that support from heaven. I'm asking you, how do you know? How do you know that we don't have that salvation in our hands? How do you know? How do you know? If you're alive and you exist, so how do you know that you're not in the middle of the redemption right now? How do you know? How do you know that we're not inside the 40 years of Mashiach? How do you know? How do you know that Mashiach didn't came five years ago? How do you know? How do you know? Maybe Mashiach is going between us. Maybe Mashiach is going and waking up the hearts of people. How do you know that it hasn't started yet? How do you know? So why you go so negative? Why you go so down? Blaming yourself and hating yourself and, and, and rebuking yourself and, and slaughtering yourself alive for no reason. Judge yourself favorably. Try to understand your true self. Try to have some patience to yourself. Try to listen to your own voice. To your pain, to your sorrow. Start to work on yourself to build understanding inside of yourself. To accept yourself. To hug yourself. To contain yourself and to contain your friends. To bring them into the zone of Dushai. It's to love. It's to care. It's to support. It's to help. It's to provide. It's to do the best that you can. And if you cannot, so don't. If you're broke and you don't have money, no one expects you to give money. No one. And if you lack of knowledge, no one expects you to sit and teach. No one. We want you to sit and learn. We want to give you an advice or to help you financially that you will succeed. We need to understand how this movement of redemption will work. That you will be nicer to your circles and people will wake up from the fact that you were nice to them and they will learn from you that they should be nicer to their circles. And then those circles are expanding and growing and spreading in the world. And then you can see that the awakeness of tshuva today in this generation, not the tshuva to become religious, that's another thing. The awareness to yourself. To be able to listen to your inner voice that is telling you, but you are wrong, but you are lying to yourself, but you're cheating right now, but you're being cheap right now, but you're not honest right now, but you're betraying yourself right now, but you're going against yourself. You take decisions out of fear right now. You take decisions out of, out of stress right now. Don't do that. To develop that awareness to yourself, to be able to listen, to hear your own inner voice, to listen to yourself, to listen to the voice of the creation of Hashem. That Hashem created you with an inner installed system that works that feels, that sense, that thinks, that comes to conclusions, that have understanding, that develop, that grow, 
that learn from the experience of life. And if you drop all of your conclusions, and if you disgrace yourself, and if you don't give yourself another chance, so you're so far from Hashem. Really to be close to Hashem is to know that Hashem is close to you. That's the whole story. You need to know that Hashem is already here. You don't need to go and look for Hashem. Where do you think you're going to find Hashem? Hashem is here. Where? Here, right now. Inside of you, surrounding you, in your ears, in your nose, in your mouth. You taste Hashem, you smell Hashem, you hear Hashem, because there is nothing except of Hashem. So who are you? If Enod Milvado, if there is no one except of Hashem, so who in the world are you? Who are you? Nice to meet you. I'm Hashem. Moshe Rabbein is able to say to his people, Kipi Hashem Diber Alechem. It was the mouth of Hashem that was talking to you. What? We're hearing Moshe. No, it's the voice of Hashem. You think that I can speak. You think that you can speak. You think that you can speak. That's your mistake. You think that you can smell. You think that you just smelled something. You think that you can see. You think that you just saw something. That's a mistake. The truth is that God, that He got eyes, that the eyes of Hashem are walking and wondering and looking and seeing in the world. From those eyes, from His power of eyesight, He sends beams of light into your eyes and now you can see. You cannot see. Take your eyes to the doctor. Open the National Geographic about the human eye. It will show you that the eye is only a piece of, 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 of blood and, and, and skin with a hole in the center. And you can see through that hole. Who are you? How can, he, how can it be? <laughs> it's impossible. Go to a doctor to explain to you how you can define between smells, between taste, the taste. It's impossible. It's nonsense. There are people that can remember smells. Oh, I remember that smell. Yes, we, I smelled that smell. 13 years ago, we were in a, in, a, in a hotel. I don't know what. And people can remember smells. It's impossible. They have a whole archive of, of, of smells from, from, from ancient history. Hashem is doing those things. It's impossible for us to do. Can you smell? If you want to smell now, can you promise me that you can smell? I can't smell anything. Can you promise me I can see? I can't see. Where is it? Oh, oh, it was here on my forehead. And they take their glasses and put them back in their place. You can't see even when you think that you can see. Only when Hashem gives you the ability to see, now you can see. Hashem lets you feel, now you can feel. So you feel through the feelings of the Creator. You see through the eyes of Hashem. You can smell through the nose of Hashem. And you... You just have that merit from heaven that God chose you to let you experience life. To let you experience Him while He is alive. Because He is Chaya Chaim, the source of life. And you, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about you. I know that I'm, I'm, I'm just a guest here in this world. <laughs> I just jumped for a visit. <laughs> I don't belong here, that's for sure. I don't belong here. My body got desires and he wants always to rest and to be left alone and always to have all the comfort in the world. Okay, and I have issues with that, so it's not me. And my soul desires Hashem and wants only good and wants redemption and wants salvation and wants always to everyone to be happy and everyone to be glad. And okay, it's also a very high level and I'm trying to, 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 to find that connection to my holy soul. And oh, so who am I? I'm just standing between and trying to, to hold the, the rope from, from, to, to make a tie between those two things. I have a body and I have a soul. Okay, and who am I? You can call me in my name, but is my name, is my real being? That's who that I am. I am Dror Moshe. That's who that I am, Dror Moshe. That's it. No. I have memories and I can feel and I want things and I have plans and I forgot something yesterday and today, I, oh, and I just got that idea in my mind. Who are you? First of all, work on yourself to understand who you are. 
who Hashem made you to be. What are your gifts? What are your talents? What are your abilities? Also your weaknesses. Be aware to them. You have a car that can drive only 10 miles. Great! So you won't put too much on that car. And if your body can work only 8 hours, okay, so don't work 10. Feel yourself. Be aware to yourself. And that's what Hashem wants you to. Hashem wants you to be connected to Him. He is the truth. He is reality. He wants you to connect yourself to reality. And now, just be nice. Just be the best person that you can be. Don't lose yourself inside the religion. And don't lose yourself inside the, the communities and the, and the customs and the habits and whatever. Keep on searching and looking for the Creator. Keep on searching and looking for the light of your own soul. And don't go back. Don't go back from that search. Because what if you can bring, if you're really going to pull it very, very hard, if you're going to catch your soul and going to pull it very, very strong, you can bring down Hashem to this world. That's what you can do. Because from inside, you're 100% connected to Hashem. Your soul is a godly soul. Yaakov Hevel Nachalato. It's a rope. And that rope is tied to the source of souls, right? So you're a soul. And you're holding that soul, it's a rope. So hold it strong and now pull. And now pull another part and another part and another part. And if you're very strong, you're going to bring salvation. You're going to bring the light. You're going to bring Mashiach. You don't know that you can bring Mashiach. You don't know that you can bring salvation because you don't know who you are. You don't know the power that you have. You just bought a new Macintosh Apple to your house. It's 2017. You don't have a clue what to do with it. right? You don't know how they program that computer. You don't have no understanding how many programs and abilities that computer got. You don't have a clue. Why? Because you... Your knowledge based on your old computer that was 2011, right? And now, based on that computer, you cannot know how much more you can accomplish with that new 2017. But after you're going to work one year, two years, seven years, you're going to learn more. And then you can understand that there is much more to it. But it's a process. And this world, the physical world, is only hinting us to understand how deep is our inner potential, our spiritual potential, to bring down salvation with the power of our own prayer, with connecting ourselves to the roots of our own souls, to the Creator, and to bring down salvation to this world. So if you saw that you had a miracle, one time you were stuck with no money for rent, and you cried to Hashem, you went to the field and you prayed, please Hashem, and Hashem Hoshiana, save us, please redeem us, Hashem we need salvation, we need money, I must pay. And then, one day, two days, six hours later, some person called you and you got the money, and you felt, wow, it was because of my Bodhidut, it was because of my prayer, okay. Now, it's supposed to teach you that you can use that tool to bring bigger salvation. Because rent is a tiny thing compared to what that you can accomplish. Rent is an amazing thing to achieve. But, compared to what that you can bring down to this world, it's tiny. Because if you're really going to be so happy, and you're going to realize that Hashem is able to pay your rent, and you will pray now with that heart to Hashem to pay the rent of all of those people that cannot cover their rent this month. Hashem will do that for you because of your honesty. So now you can pay million people's rent in one month and you don't know that. Why? Because you're not pulling strong enough. Because after you've been satisfied, oh, I paid my rent, now I can go to sleep. And you go to sleep. But don't go to sleep. Go and call Hashem. Because Hashem needs us to call Him. Hashem is hiding His face. There is an amazing and very painful story about Rabbi Baruch Mimejibuj. Rabbi Baruch Mimejibuj, he was the uncle of, the, of, of Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. He was the, the, the brother 
of the, the, the I'm sorry, um, the, the the grandson of, of the, the Baal Shem Tov, and he once walked in the street and he saw a person that standing and, and crying. So he went to that person and asked him, why are you crying? So he told him, my friends and I who were playing hide and seek, and I was hiding, and my friends, after a few minutes, they gave up on me and they went. And suddenly Rabbi Baruch started crying. So that person asked him, why are you crying? So he said, Hashem Barach did the exact same thing with us. He hid himself from us for a minute and we gave up on him and we stopped looking and he is now sitting in his hidden place and crying and he is sitting and crying and wait, waiting for us to look for him. Rabbi Baruch learned from that person's situation about Hashem. Hashem created us in his shape, Betzalmo. Now, how can it be that Hashem created us in His shape if He doesn't have a shape? And the goof, He doesn't have a body. And the muta goof, He doesn't have the shape of a body. So how can it be that He made us in His shape if He's beyond shape? It's impossible. You don't need to be a genius. You just need to have that ability to say, it's impossible. Just believe in yourself and say, it's impossible. It can't be. So... But still it's written that Hashem made us in His shape without a shape. So you need to go out of your box and to understand that you also don't have no limits. That you are exactly like Hashem. Because your soul is a godly soul. And when you have that channel and it's open and it's clean and it's clear, it can bring down the salvation in the amount that Hashem will decide to push down that channel. It doesn't need to be corresponding to your power, depending on your abilities. No! You think that Moshe had the ability to open the Red Sea? That Moshe Rabbeinu had the power to bring, bring plagues to the world? To, to, to. Moshe was a regular person. But he was a very dedicated person. He was a truthful person. He was a righteous person. He was a very strong and stubborn person that went all the way towards Hashem. So Hashem opened the sea for him. Hashem didn't open the sea. Hashem opened the sea. Boke ayam lifnei Moshe. Hashem opened the sea in front of Moshe. Moshe cannot open the sea. Moshe can say, Anna Hashem, Moshe Anna, please Hashem save us. That's what Moshe can do. Moshe can call Hashem. And then Hashem can answer. So Hashem needs us to call him, and then he will answer. There was such a horrible situation about to happen in Florida. And people were terrified. And thousands and millions of people went and cried to the Creator. And prayed, please Hashem, please the Creator, please Father in Heaven, please the Lord. Please, and calling and calling and calling. And in the end, things just happened. And it wasn't so bad as people thought that it would be. Why? Because the prayer has been accepted. Because the prayer has been accepted. How many times in the last few years we heard that it's about to be the third world war and the world is about to finish and meteorites and whatever wars and, and, and nuclear weapons. Every year the same story, different lands, different uh, ministers, different people, different fake news. And it's <laughs> Hashem is running the show and Hashem is bringing the world to the redemption. And the awakeness of Shuvah of all of us. Where did we came from? Where did you came from? Where did I came from? Only Hashem woke me up from my deep sleep and told me, Hey my son, wake up, I'm your father. And I woke up. And then you woke up, and then he woke up, and then she woke up, and everyone are waking up. So that awakeness is beyond nature. That's the miracles of those are the miracles of, of the redemption. That we are waking up from complete darkness to see the light and to recognize the existence of the Creator in our life. 
and bless you all to have faith in yourselves and to believe in yourselves in the powers that are treasured inside of you to count on your inner voices and to believe in yourselves and to go and to believe that you are worthy and deserve to be answered and that Hashem will answer all of our prayers and will atone and will erase all of our sins and all of our mistakes Amen Can you hear us all? Thank you very much this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks.